Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanna walk you through a real client project I've been working on this year. The founder came across my YouTube channel and reached out to see if I could help him turn the MVP for his product, Floutwork, into a more polished and intuitive platform. Floutwork is a suite of connected workplace apps that promotes focus and productivity through its unique built-in features. If you go and download Floutwork now, you actually won't see many of these changes quite yet. You'll see some things um, happening in the background but a lot of the UI is still being updated by the developer. So that's really why I wanted to walk you through this project now that I'm able to share it and show you the pretty cool before and after that we were able to achieve. If after watching this video, you're interested in actually checking out the platform for yourself and using it for your own work and productivity, then you can actually go create a free plan. And when you're ready to upgrade, use my code Maddie23 for 20% off of a pro plan. Okay, let's dive into the project. So this project was actually split up into, I would say three different phases. First was the audit. So when a client comes to me with an MVP or an existing product, I really like to start by going really deep into the product and doing my own detailed audit to determine what opportunities we have for improvement. A lot of times clients come to me and they know that they want their design to be better. They know that they want the user experience to be better, but they don't know exactly what needs to be done. So I'm always more than happy to dive in and point out all of the big and small things that could be opportunities for improvement and growth. When I'm doing an audit for a product like this, I like to get in there as a real user and use this product as I would if I were a first time user. So I recorded my screen and I went through and kind of just experienced the product for what it was. And in terms of the brand look and feel, what really stood out to me that could be improved was just the overall style of the icons, text and colors, shadows, line quality, things like that. They felt really rigid to me and they also felt a bit old school and outdated. The illustrations were very much out of the box, just something that you can grab really quickly, which is great when you're building something for a prototype, but when you wanna launch something and really see if someone can get into the experience, pay you money for it and enjoy it and use it as part of their work stack, then things like this are actually very important because really good design builds trust and it gets people excited to go in and use the app. And to be completely honest, when I first entered this app, I didn't see it as something that I would get excited to get into every day in order to do my work. The visual language I felt could be a lot more soft and inviting. And since the whole point of flat work is to promote focus and productivity, I felt like it should just be more comfortable and simple. I started to remember an email client that I looked into back in the day called Tempo. And similar to Flatwork, their whole idea was to promote focus in email by really pairing it back and keeping the interface simple and minimalist. So as I got in a lot deeper and experienced this app sort of day to day, I noticed a lot of room for improvement in terms of UI UX. One thing was that the grouping and hierarchy could definitely be improved. There's sort of a psychological principle, the law of proximity, where users will group together content that is close to each other and they'll think that it's related. So if it's not, that's gonna cause a lot of friction in using the product. This is why layout and hierarchy is so important to get right. I noticed there was a good bit of content that was kind of squished together with not enough breathing room or even clicking room. There were lots of long line lengths. So not only would someone not really want to read an explainer text if it's too long, but it also becomes really difficult for users to read lines of text that are longer than 75 characters. There was not a whole lot of typographic hierarchy, which made your eye kind of jump around the page and not know where to look. Some elements were too small. And one big thing is I felt like the app as a whole needed a home base. So the audit was part one in this project and part two and three are how we actually solve these problems once we identified them. 
So phase two was branding and finding our visual voice. This is a process that honestly could take months. As a former branding and marketing and web designer, I know that you can go very, very deep into this process and sometimes that's necessary. But I find for startups, especially in this space, I've kind of honed in on what is most important to focus on. So for this project, I really wanted to focus on honing in our colors, typography, iconography, and illustration style. For the colors, I decided to go with these muted blues and greens. Blues and greens are low wavelength colors, and in scientific studies, those colors are actually shown to improve focus and efficiency, so I thought that would be perfect for flat work. After a little bit of trial and error, I determined that we needed eight different values of each of these colors, along with a gray scale to use for most of the typography that's not interactive. Then along the way, we added some additional colors like like critical text colors and a highlight color. In terms of typography, we ended up going with the font Inter. It's very, very simple and easy to read. It's a Google font, so it's super easy to implement for any project. And it's got lots of visual weights, so we could really establish a hierarchy and typographic system for flat work. For icons, I really like to start with an icon pack, I guess you could say that already exists, and then add to it. I used Icon Noir, which is an open source icon icon set online, downloaded a ton of icons from there, and updated the line quality just a little bit so that it felt really rounded and soft and approachable, but also very simple and easy to denote what each icon means. There's nothing too stylized or anything about them. Once I grabbed everything that I needed from Icon Noir, I ended up filling in the gaps a lot just by going in using the pen tool and creating icons with the same colors, line thickness, corner radius and things like that which resulted in this whole icon library that really has the flexibility to grow with flat work. And last for branding is illustrations. So I went on to Icons 8 and looked for some existing illustrations that we could purchase for flat work. I grabbed eight to 10 that I really liked and shared them with Daniel, the founder, to see what really resonated with him. We ended up landing on these really kind of quirky, almost like 50s cartoons that kind of turn a computer or a car coffee or anything sort of work productivity related into these little characters. I thought they were just the cutest. And we ended up turning those into something that could really work in the flout work ecosystem just by changing the colors. So I made them sort of these tonal kind of stone colors where it's just different values of the same, you know, teal blue color. And that worked really, really well. So you can see this is kind of how we ended up using them for things like empty states or long in, sign up, fun things like that that need a little extra branding. Okay, now to really get into the meat and potatoes of this project, which is the improvements to the UI UX and the product itself. So for this, I wanna actually walk you through these so I can show you the prototypes and kind of why we made some of the decisions we did. The first app we're going to look at is the Flatwork Tasks app. And like I mentioned before, this is sort of the home base that we kind of landed on. So before this was kind of the home base, it was this launch pad where you can go click into any of the apps but I kind of felt like that was not really going to ground the user and get them straight in doing what they need to do each day. The whole point of flat work is that you shouldn't have to go outside of the app for anything. You can search the web within Flatwork. You can really do anything that you need to do. You shouldn't have to sort of distract yourself with other tabs or apps or anything like that. You can use Figma inside of Flatwork. So I really felt like this, where you just have a list of apps, basically a list of things that could distract you, wouldn't be the best place to drop a user, whether a first time user or a user coming in for you know the 100th day in a row. I felt like we should have a better home base. So I took this side navigation and really changed it up a little bit. So no matter what app you're in, your tasks app is always going to remain this top biggest app 
this is your home base. After that, I have the more sort of like utility tools within Flatwork, the search, the launch pad. And then after that, you have all of your apps. And these don't just have to be Flatwork apps. They could also be Google Chrome or Figma or things like that that you also will need to access within your workday. So exploring tasks a little bit, let's go into the prototype. So this tasks app is all about tracking your to-dos and your goals and you know, the tasks inside of those things. So there's different ways that you can sort of view this. Your plan view, which is broken up by day. Your list view, which is just a running list. And you can also see goals and tasks that you have completed. But the other important thing that Flatwork really helps you do in a key feature is actually putting time on your calendar to do these things automatically for you. So we needed this calendar to fit seamlessly within this layout. And this is sort of how we've done it. We can go in here and see our settings for our calendar. You can switch your workspace here. So maybe I have a work workspace and I also have a more personal workspace. I can also access my preferences by clicking on my image right here. And you can also configure your notifications here as well. So these things are on pretty much every single page in the main Flatwork suite of apps. So you start to kind of get comfortable with where things are. There's there's always going to be sort of a left sidebar where you can filter out and sort of organize things and see what you're looking at. For example, tasks might be tagged with priority ones or different hashtags to keep them organized. Now let's look at adding a goal. So you can add a goal here and you can actually have Flatwork track your goal automatically, which is pretty cool. Um, or you could move it yourself and I'll show you what that means in a second. So you can fill all that out and save the new goal. And then let's click on one and see this slider allows you to actually manually track how far along you are with this goal. And this is just to show you how many screens really go into designing something like this. This is on top of all of our sort of design system things here. We have all these buttons, we've got some inputs, some selectors, some drop downs, progress bars, cards, and browser bars, along with all of our pages. So that's just kind of to show you how many screens it really takes to design something like this, especially if you want to prototype certain things. Let's dive into emails next. So emails is where I wanna show you where the browser comes into play. So this is really cool. So not only does Flatwork allow you to access Chrome or whatever it might be um, inside of the Flatwork app, but it actually integrates with it to give you some like added features, if you will. So right now, um, let's say that I I'm in google.com and I, for whatever reason, I want to see what emails I have that are specifically from google.com. Now that I'm thinking about it, this isn't the best example to really illustrate the value of this feature. So think about it like maybe I am on my banking website for my business and I'm confused because of a transaction that I'm seeing and I wanna see if I've gotten a notification from my bank about it. So I'm on my banking website or whatever that is and I just go up to this browser bar here, manage emails from this site. And if I click on that, then see here, I'm only seeing emails from Google or if I were on my banking site, I would only see emails from found.com or PNC. And this is super helpful because it basically just filters emails for you so you don't have to go searching. The other way this could be helpful is maybe you're getting tons and tons of emails from a specific site that you really don't wanna be getting anymore. You can actually go into one of the emails, auto delete these. So it says, are you sure you wanna auto delete all emails like this? And I can say yes. And then it's saying, great job, you cleaned up four emails with just one click. And as those emails come in, Flatwork will just automatically delete them for you, which is super helpful. Okay, so then maybe we want to go into the actual email app within Flatwork. As you can see, 
the way I've done this layout, it's kind of similar to the Tasks app and that is completely on purpose. We want it to feel like all one experience. We want the user to get used to where things are. So this over here on the left is where you can kind of filter what emails you're seeing. So here is actually where you can see all of the emails, just like a normal sort of email client. So if you click into any of these, you'll be able to see the email itself. I can also filter here by unread or includes attachments. Maybe I wanna see all the emails that were CC'd to me. And here is where our inbox zero little guy comes in. So if you don't have any emails, you get to see this guy. He's just meditating. Now let's look at the password vault. So this is what the password vault used to look like. Very overwhelming, too many fields. All of these fields seem editable, even though maybe they're not. We had this text that was going off the page. There's a lot of value in the feature itself, but we really weren't packaging it in the best way. So we've really done a lot of work on the password vault to help that. You can see our hover state here. So these are basically all of your passwords. If you've used something like Dashlane, I took a lot of inspiration from Dashlane and their user experience. You can basically just look at a very organized, simple list of all of the websites that you've saved your password for. You can go in and actually look at all of these details here. You could go straight to the website. And if you're on any website and you haven't logged in yet, then you can go up to your browser bar and just click see passwords for this site. You can open this and you'll actually be able to see all of the different accounts you have saved with whatever website you're on and you can easily log right in. You can import passwords from Chrome or whatever CSV file you have saved on your computer, add new passwords manually, and you can even delete all to start fresh. Fill your bars is a fun one and it's basically all about your work activity, meeting goals like focus hours, completing a certain amount of tasks for the day, and keeping track of the total amount of hours you work. So we're inside this prototype here and you can see that when you hover over over any of these sort of slices of the pie, you can see some more details about your activity. You can even customize the range of the dates that you're seeing here, so you can really get granular with the data. You can even go back in time and see what you accomplished any day prior, and then at any point, just shortcut back to today. There's activity settings here so that you can set your own goals, and there's more information here on these goals and exactly what they mean. So this little icon might look familiar, that's exactly what is over here at Fill Your Bars. Next, we have notes. So with notes, they can be organized by tags and you can also see all of your notes in sort of chronological order here, much like the Apple Notes app. Collapse all of this and have a very focused writing session. Here's what a filled note looks like. You can highlight things. And of course, we have a browser integration for this too. So this gets super, super helpful where you can take notes over top of a web page or something like that. This was the trickiest one when it comes to breakpoints because we really wanted to make sure that you could get the most out of this notes app on any screen size. So you can see we did a lot of different versions for this depending on the screen size. Next is bookmarks, which I'm not gonna dive too deeply into because next week I have a design with me video coming out where we actually design this whole feature together. You get to see really my real time thought process in a pretty long video of how I approached this bookmarks app for this project. So you can check that out next week. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. I really hope you guys enjoyed seeing this little walkthrough. If a real client project walkthrough is something that you want to see more of on this channel, please let me know in the comments and give this video a thumbs up. Huge thank you to Daniel from Flatwork for letting me sort of spotlight this on my channel. Make sure to check out Flatwork. If you're interested, I'll leave the link below. And if you do like it and you want to switch to a pro plan, use the code MADDIE23. Make sure you tune in next week to see a very raw and real behind the scenes of how I designed one of these apps. It's from a few months ago, so my hair probably will look different and I'm in a completely different different setting, but it's a really fun video and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you really soon. Bye.